What is Farina to Nouvellette? What is Nouvellette to Farina? What are they to Alofontaine? Why are they so important? Not just as the Udex and the Archon, but as themselves. These questions have always been in my head since we dove into Fontaine. Both of them are paramount to the survival of not just Fontaine, but possibly all of Tavat. Hey guys, what's up? Aru, and in this video, we'll be taking a philosophical and lore-filled look at the relationship between Farina and Nouvellet, the words of Farina in both the trailer and the recent teaser, and what both of them are to the previous Archon Aegiria, as well as her plan for the future of Fontaine and Tevat. Of course, timestamps below, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Many people in Fontaine and even players of Genshin see Farina as the bratty, annoying, funny, and the memed useless god of justice. Her very flamboyant and over-the-top energy is possibly the unique personality that Nahida mentions. Fontaineans even call her a quote-unquote mascot than an actual god. What's weirder is that the people of Fontaine assume that there is no law for saying something disrespectful to their own Archon, compared to other regions who have the utmost respect for their Archon. From this statement alone, we already know that people of Fontaine really like Farina, but we can also see that they don't really revere her. This is an interesting notion considering Archons rely on their people's belief, i.e. reverence, for them to have more power. The people of Fontaine place more belief in the Udex Nouvellet than their own Archon. Their relationship at first glance seems like that of a bratty little sister and a serious older brother. But what I see is Nouvellet trying to discern Farina's true intentions through that brattiness. And it's also what we could discern from Fremine, Linny, and Lynette's voiceovers about her personality and what she may hide. She's unpredictable and has a pretty provocative personality, but is this Farina we currently see the real Farina that we've heard from before? And is this the same Farina the Udex Nouvellet actually knows of and speaks to behind the trials? We've never seen her outside of the trials, or at least outside of her over-the-top shenanigans. Nouvellet is the strict and inexorable ordainer of justice. He is respected and nearly revered by the people of Fontaine. He does his job as the Udex of the court and makes sure that justice is upheld to the highest degree. But Nouvellet has a pretty serious problem with the concept of justice and what it means to be truly human. He seems to be confused with the importance of life to humans since he himself is born in that same form. And he is also perplexed by the idea of justice that is nearly abominated by theater. He wonders if the justice that he exercises is actually just. A machine deciding justice, a theater mixed with a courtroom, even worse is Farina's peculiar personality of being childlike and imprudent even though she is the god of justice. But is Nouvellet's confusion a mere misunderstanding or is it his purpose to find the true meaning of humanity and justice? The previous Hydro Archon Egeria once created the first Oceanid from her first tier, and was the noble navigator of Fontaine since she became the Hydro Archon. She was Fontaine's revered and praised god for a long time, up until the Cataclysm 500 years ago, where she fought unimaginable droves of abyss creatures and fell in Sumeru's deserts, becoming the Pool of Amrita, leaving Fontaine with no Archon and Forina having to take up the mantle as the god of justice. But it seems like Farina knows little of being a god of justice and isn't really the standard of justice from what we currently see. We have no clear information on how Farina became the Archon as well as her relation to Egeria, but Egeria's first tier to create the first Oceanid might hold the meaning and relation to Farina becoming the god of justice, Nouvellet becoming the Udex, as well as Nouvellet's dilemma with justice and humanity and Farina's conundrum with Fontaine's fate. Remember the Varunada gemstone? Yeah, let's go over what that says real quick. My ideals have no stains. I must correct you. People here bear no sin in the eyes of gods. Only laws and the tribunal can judge someone. They can even judge me. So praise my magnificence and purity. Honestly, this statement fits both Farinas if you just put the right intonations in place. But something different here is the fact that the Varunada gemstone speaks of sin differently from the prophecy we hear from Fontaine. And this manner of speaking also fits the notion that Farina says in both the 4.1 trailer 
and Nuvolet's teaser. It even pushes forward a meaning of justice and sin that only this other Farina could know, and could be the notion of justice that Nuvolet is trying to understand. Listen to this scene real quick. Is this what justice means to you? Answer me, Nuvolet! You will see much in the human world, from the delightful to the depressing. And one day, when you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. Quite a lot of words there, but don't worry, Tavat's quack lawyer is here to help you. Every statement in that scene is paramount to understanding the definition in the Varunada gemstone. Is this what justice means to you? Going back to the 4.0 Archon quest, Nuvolet has had a problem with understanding the true definition of justice and humanity ever since Kallus' trial, Navia's trial, and even Vashay's decision. I'd hazard a guess that he's been wondering that since he was born, but we'll go back to that later. Nuvolet's understanding of justice has been altering since that day with Kallus' trial and it also messed up his understanding of humanity and what they truly value. Justice isn't always about who is right or wrong, nor is humanity always about who lives and dies. This is the dilemma that Nouvellet has experienced with Kallus, Navia, and Vache. Justice could be to take one life for the sake of many, as apparent in Kallus and Navia's quest, and it is also justice to take many lives for the sake of a loved one, as well as to give one's life to see that loved one, evident in Vache. I doubt that even you, yes you, the one watching this, would even believe if someone said that a person died but was turned into water without any evidence. Much more if it was a loved one, so where's the justice in that? This is exactly why both Vache and Navia want justice for Vignet and Callus, but they took different paths based on their understanding of justice. And by certain accounts, they both have the right to execute that justice. Yet to Nouvellet, a verdict must be called for the trial, and even worse is that the oratress has to make a verdict. What's more is that Nouvellet is trying to understand the true meaning of justice and what justice means for humanity, as well as humanity itself as a concept, even though he himself may or may not be human. Which leads us to this line here. You will see much in the human world, from the delightful to the depressing. And one day, when you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. This is the purpose that the more serious Farina has given to Nouvellet, and the guidance that she gave to him in his quest. To understand what it is to be human, experiencing all their ups and downs, and one day to be able to call humans innocent, even though humanity and life as humans is full of sin. And one day, once he understands that conflicting notion about humans and finally accepts it, he will then be able to take his stand as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. This past, I would guess, is the past that the Primordial One and the Shades once had with humanity and the sins of humanity that were destined from the start, of which we have a certain book in Fontaine that speaks of that era without being sunk and sealed away like Enkanomia. This is the disposition that humanity has within them, and to punish them for that and calling it arrogation is a very presumptuous notion for someone or something who allegedly created humanity. This is the message that Forina has for Nouvellet, and this is why Nouvellet must then understand just and humanity, because this is the sole purpose of his creation. Moving on to Nouvellet's teaser, we also see the same confusion with humans and justice. But this teaser focuses more on humanity itself as well as Nouvellet's memory, which is connected to this line here. So, why don't you try to find the answer for yourself?
This line is connected to what Farina said in her trailer. Of course, not literally. It holds the same message that Nervolet must be with humans and dwell with humanity to experience everything a human can from the delightful to the depressing. And once he does that, he can finally be one with himself as a human. But what is Nuvolet really? Many, including me, suggest that he is a bishop and could be the hydro dragon who creates rain when they weep. But there's a deeper and possibly more lore accurate version. Hear me out. Oceanids, from what we know, gain more power by joining with water sources. Narvelet can absorb source water droplets and charge his attacks faster, and expelling this with a charged attack will consume HP. Oceanids become less intelligent when they lose power by separating. There's also these lines from Narvelet. To me, humanity is like a pool of water in which I see my reflection. Only through observing them. Can I slowly come to understand myself? Now, I'm not saying that Nuvolet isn't the Hydro Sovereign, but a Hydro Sovereign can be from a hybrid between an Oceanid and a Bishop that was born a human, which is apparent in Aguirre's segment for why he is created that way, which we'll talk about in a bit. Nuvolet's mission given to him by Forina is to be more human and know what humanity truly is, which is what many Archons have done in the past. But when it comes to justice, one must understand the sin of humanity to properly be a spokesperson of Fontaine and its past sins. Having memories of the Hydro Sovereign is also something he might gain if he speaks of something he forgot. This is the message that Forina wishes for Nuvolet to someday realize, and is the purpose and mission since he was born in that form. Finally, we have Egeria, the reason for Farina and Nuvolet to be the way they are. Because Egeria, 90 out of 100%, has something to do with Nuvolet's creation as well as Farina's current nature. This information is from Fontaine's Institute of Natural Philosophy. Long ago, Egeria created the first Oceanid from her first tier. But this first Oceanid was said to be born from Egeria's sympathy for dragons as well as her sadness for humanity's eventual fate. With that in mind, this newborn Oceanid was tasked with comprehending all forms of life, to seek an understanding of all creatures and love them all equally. The first Oceanid emerged from the Sea of Life, or the Primordial Sea, with the power of metamorphosis, which means he could transform into a human. Egeria wanted this Oceanid to understand the meaning of life and develop a yearning for life, which is what Nervolet thought he knew. Humans value their lives, but this isn't always the case. In the text, after it gained its understanding of humanity, it then shed its own first tear on the earth. This is the origin of the Oceanids, and this is the same mission that Nuvolet must understand. Now there is more information regarding the Oceanids' history as well as what this first tier exactly is. But this first tier is only known to Oceanids and the Hydro Archon, which we might likely know about in 4.1. Nuvolet and Forina both have a tier amulet. While the purpose of the first Oceanid is to understand humanity, but Nuvolet's amulet is incomplete. And this is where Forina and the knowledge within her comes in. Egeria, Osalor, and Forina could all just be the same Hydro Archon holding the message that Nuvolet needs to know about humanity. The noble navigator of both Nuvolet and all of Fontaine still lives. And her first tier is very apparent in her possible first creation, Nuvolet, as well as everywhere on Forina's person. And the Oceanids get more powerful when they absorb sources of water. And a tear manifested into Farina is a very important source of water and knowledge. This is also apparent in Novelette's teaser. Tears on the intro and a drop of water may be a tear at the end of his teaser. Farina is the key to Novelette understanding the true meaning of humanity and justice because Farina holds the hopes and understanding of justice and humanity that Egeria once had before she fell in the cataclysm, while Nervolet is Farina's, rather Egeria's hope to save all of Fontaine and possibly all of Tavat. This includes the Oceanids, the Melusines, Vishap Dragons, and most importantly, humanity.
And there we go, a deep and philosophical take on Nuvolet's purpose, Farina's message, and Egeria's mission given to both of them for Fontaine. Comment below if you think that Farina is going to transform into Egeria in 4.2. If you enjoyed it, do leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my content. This is honestly something I've been wanting to talk about for a hot minute. Since a lot of people try to separate Farina and Nuvolet, or make one better than the other, but to me, and based on the lore I know of Fontaine, they need each other for Fontaine to stay afloat and for humanity to be fully realized. Anyway, I've babbled and simped for both of these hydro creatures <laughs> for long enough. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? So like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings. Always stay mad. And in the words of Farina, to Lou, 